I drive my kid to school most days. Well, sure, they're not going to drive themselves. No, and his, his uh, bus pass has expired. He's on the um, MTA? He's only five. He's on the MTA, He's yeah. got a tap card. Yeah, he only has to walk a mile to take the bus quarter mile. <laughs> the LA transit system is so fucking terrible. And he said, I always ask him, do you want me to drive slow or fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he usually says, you know, fast or uh, very fast. Does he, has he ever said yes. slow? He has said slow on a couple times. And did you just make him crazy going I, a mile an hour? I did not listen to him. Oh, okay. I chose those times to not listen to him at all. He didn't seem to care. Because you have things you have to do in your life. I got shit to yeah, do, no, buddy. Course, and this car only really has one speed and it's warp speed. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm, I'm driving to school and there's one, you know, it's LA. So you never get to go fast anywhere, no. especially not in traffic. There's one little stretch of road where I was able to go for it. He got the tail a little loose, a little bit oversteer. Oh, yeah, 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 super fast. And we got to school and he said, daddy, is that as fast as the M3 goes? Yeah. And I said, no, buddy, I left a, a little bit, a little bit out there. Sure. Quiet, please. And he was just disappointed that I didn't go for it as fast as I could. Of course. He gave me this like disappointed <laughs> look that like, why are you only just... You let me down, daddy. Yeah, I asked for yeah, fast. That's fast. <laughs> yeah. Four, as fast as you three. Can. Here. Two. The Apple Company presents a truly terrible podcast. Welcome to Nonsense, episode number 19. I'm Jeff Parker. And I'm CJ Little. This is our take on the week's business tech and entertainment headlines. This time we'll look at why we're not flying fast and the treasure trove of your personal data that's for sale from your grocery store. It's right next to the oranges. It's National Technology Day. What does that mean? All day long. Is that like just, our day? That means today, we're in headlines, we're going to mostly devote it to AI. Oh, that'll be an interesting change. Because the, that's the, the bulk of what's happening in the world of, isn't of it, technology. Isn't it also National Twilight Zone Day? It is National Twilight Zone Day, and I'm not positive those things might be related. Well, it's also National uh, Hostess Cupcake oh, Day. Oh, there you go. And I'm going to celebrate. Ding-dongs. Oh, for sure, for sure. We said last week, uh, we were talking about Mastodon having a, a rough onboarding process. Do you remember? this yeah all that sargassium i'm suspicious that someone might be bugging us it's a fucking <laughs> podcast jeff they're not bugging anything we literally published this eugen the creator of mastodon has changed the way mastodon works they're uh, they're upgrading the mastodon.social server yeah. so that everyone by default now if they don't want to go pick a server which is going to be most sure. people can just literally by default go on on mastodon social and it'll Great. be an expanding server and Excellent. all that this is because of blue sky yeah and blue sky which is supposed to be federated yep. but only has one server defaults you to one server yeah no it doesn't default you there's literally only one server at yeah, this yeah. point. The kind of interesting thing about Blue Sky is there's only like nine employees, somewhere between nine and, thir- uh-huh. nine and 13 employees. So yeah. they don't really need more than one server. Also, sure. kind of a cool thing that happened this week with Blue Sky, you can buy it off of eBay. Yeah. An invitation for like a hundred bucks. I bought my Gmail invite like 20 years ago because I wanted to lock up my name. Off of eBay. I did. Oh, that's awesome. For like 25 bucks. Because yeah. I couldn't get in. Remember, everybody got like 10 invites. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And none of my friends liked me enough to give me one of the 10. Blue Sky is really interesting because they have some woman that they've given like unlimited invites to because they like the people she's Inviting. Sure. You can send me your Blue Sky invite anytime you like. Hmm. Probably wouldn't use it. It is Mastodon uh, if you took away a lot of the features. Yeah. And also made it so that it had a single owner so that you could completely do the Elon Musk thing again. Sure. What's happened with That's Twitter exactly can happen again, happen again with Blue Sky. Worked great the first time. How's your week going? So far, so good. I, uh, my arms itch. Why do your arms itch? I'm covered in fiberglass insulation. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, no matter how good wireless gets, I still feel compelled to install Ethernet. Yeah. Anywhere, yeah. If a computer sits still for more than like an hour, yes. I feel like I need to plug it into the wall. Why? is that is it for speed reasons because my wi-fi is really fast these I days i think i'm a dinosaur i'm like i'm like mel gibson in conspiracy theory remember yeah. every time he sees oh, sure, catching sure, sure. her eyes gotta buy it right, right every time i see a computer sitting still i have to plug it into the wall and i just go wire it up and put some cat six in i'm not getting what the what the i mean you know i gotta Can wash see, my hands 26 you know, times before i go to bed at night but but why do you why do you wire up <laughs> we your have our own our own vices don't <laughs> yeah. we I me mean, it's wiring cable you it's washing your hands until they're raw sure i'm pretty sure i'm coming out ahead on this one i don't know we'll, we'll put out a poll for our <laughs> listeners I like having the connection so that uh, it's always on and I have no wireless issues. I haven't had a wireless issue in 10 years. I have enterprise, enterprise grade wireless in my house. I do as well. And it still has wonky shit that happens. I have no wonky. Again. I have no problems at all with my wife. I think there's some ubiquity upgrades that happen that I'm not aware of and I have to go wind them Did back. Did you watch the coronation of King Charles? We're never going to get to our headlines because we have so many other things to get to. Did you watch the coronation of King Charles? No, I, uh, I had no problem falling asleep on my own that day. I watched because it was on and so I just was... <laughs> had me one, one eye on it for a second until I watched uh, yeah. a, a human bow to another human. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, this I'm is, done. That, this, that's, is, this, that's is not gonna, this is not going to work for yeah. me. Mother's Day is coming up. I know your mother passed away last year. And again, my, my deepest condolences. But I want to know, will you do anything for Danielle, the mother of your young son? Alleged mother. I wasn't. Okay. Not, I'm, I'm not There's entirely, no proof to that? There's no, I'm not you, certain. You know you're the father. You have no idea if it she's is, actually it, the mother. It did dawn on me. It was. The, it is the one year anniversary of, of my mom's passing. It did dawn on me that she would have been 
one of our best listeners. She would have loved sure. this show, which which would have been probably good and bad, but it would have would have meant I spent three hours a week talking to her about this show. Sure, she was the loveliest of human out. beings. She was, she was, Absolutely. Nice. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for Danielle. Well, tune- TikTok, it's coming up in like in well, three days. Here's the thing: I'm going to be out of town, oh. so she's going to have the kids. <laughs> okay. So I got her the even gift, worse the gifts of the children, <laughs> even worse for Mother's Day. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Hallmark holidays like the Valentine's Day and the Mother's Day and the Father's Day. That's my wife feels the same way. I'm just like what, like really? Can, how about the other 364 days are Mother's Day? In my older age, I kind of like excuses to stop and celebrate sure. stuff. I yeah. mean, and I don't care if it's Hallmark. I just I think it's fun to stop for a minute and let's. You I know, get that. What are you doing? I, I made my son get a card this year. Okay. It's the first time I've made him. Oh, he's wow. 16. He drives yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. And I made him actually drive to a store okay. where he could actually buy a card. Okay. Now, he went to a store and he looked through the various cards and, yep. you know, to pick out as one does. Yep. He didn't really like any the Mother's Day cards. Sure. They were just kind of goofy or whatever. Yep. Not. And he found a birthday card that really cracked him up. And so he <laughs> came back and he had this birthday card. I'm just going to cross out happy birthday and I'm going to write happy Mother's Love Day it. on the card. He can't do that. <laughs> That, though the like, writers are on strike he's not allowed to do that he just he just broke the the line the picket line i was like really you couldn't have gone to another card store and just looked at more cards you, i mean this is really just you're gonna repurpose a card just because you think he's this is repurposing more... he's customizing it i think it's cute well i actually looked at it it was kind of cute next year yeah next year i would like him to learn to order flowers there's apps for that he's going to need this skill in his life at some point i want him to have this experience well i don't want him to buy crappy flowers i want him to call someplace nice sure. you know he's going to buy just a bunch of daisies and totally. then he's going to paint them because that's what he did with the card he that's, found he found the card that he liked pretty awesome and now he's going to change it into a mother's day card i like it it's very industrious shall we get to our headlines we should the show's only an hour long let's get to our headlines i feel obligated to say that for some reason i love that intro you're so happy about it <laughs> just all right let's get to our headlines. tiktok spied on me why this is a story from uh, christina criddle she's a writer and yeah. she was doing stories on for the financial times she's yep. a very very good writer okay. and she was doing stories stories on TikTok and bite dance yep. and suddenly she got a call out of the blue when yep. she wasn't she was not working on a sure. story on them from a PR director at TikTok who said yep. just a courtesy heads up you might want to take a look at the New York Times yeah. they've published a story and so she she goes and she gets the New York Times and she finds out TikTok had been spying on her with her personal information so that they could know Oopsies. What, who of their employees yeah. was leaking information to her because sure. they can see location. Location they, data, yep. Facebook has been doing this for years. If, yeah. if literally, they, they know that if an employee's phone is at the same location as a reporter's phone, they know. Yeah, they, they know like a, Do you think like a little notification pops up on Zuck's phone? Well, on somebody's device, they actually yeah. do get information and, and, sure. and it also logs how much time they're spending together. Wow. So if they happen to be walking by each other in a restaurant, yeah, okay, who cares? But if they're spending 30 minutes together, sure. now it's interesting. Well, what are they This is what about? TikTok did and kind of a fascinating story. Quick question. Yeah. Uh, unrelated. Do, do you still think we shouldn't ban them? You still think we should just leave them? Well, then you're going to have to ban Facebook because Facebook okay. does this oh, too. Okay. Yeah. yeah any, anything else you want to add to the list? I'm good with all these things. I just what don't. We, I don't have ban the, Twitter too? I don't. <laughs> we just ban them all? I don't have this problem with, so, I'm not a big social media user myself, but I really don't have this problem with TikTok as opposed to others. What, what are the top three you would ban? Well, I'm not banning anything. No, but if you had a ban hammer. No, but if you had, I said, it's like Brewster's Millions reversed. You have to ban three services or I'd ban them all. That's hilarious, by the way. I would ban uh, Facebook. I don't ever use Facebook, but I I guess I would ban that because that seems to be the source of a lot of misinformation. Uh, I would probably ban the current version of Twitter just because it's, uh, you know, I used to use Twitter. I used to like Twitter a lot and it's just become, you know, I I don't even look at it. It's so depressing. And then the third one, I don't know. Do I don't even have a third one? Do you? Yelp. I'd ban Yelp. Why? It's just gotten terrible. I used to look at it for reviews for things. I know. You, you don't use it for that anymore? Well, you, if you can find the reviews, fuck, it's easier to find Easter eggs. Because so many people who are reviewing haven't even used the service that they're reviewing. And there's the sponsorship thing, and it always gets to be in sorted order that's like Yelp favorite. Like, I feel like they've really ruined that service. Oh, okay. Oh, I, again, I, I don't use it enough to, have, to know. Google will retire Chrome's HTTPS padlock icon. Because it's given up on SSL entirely. <laughs> All plain text. Only plain text. If it's SSL, it says, warning, this site's trying to protect you. Please go somewhere else. Please go to TikTok. <laughs> We want to make sure we get all your data. I, that should be I really think they funny. pretty much won the war. I think the padlock did its job. I think did there's it? almost so much. How much of the web do you ever see that's not not encrypted now? I mean, there's still some sketchy ass sites that come up now and again that don't or have like some fake SSL search or something. Well, HTTPS sites for sure, but at least they're HTTPS sites. You're not you're not I able to view what that person sure. is browsing. At least well, I think Chrome did an okay job in the browsers in general. But like the folks at Let's Encrypt really made that a thing. So you'd have to go spend five hundred bucks because they made it easy from yeah. yeah from thought or whatever. Acme 
he's like, you know, should have won program of the year. Yeah. That's every year. Fantastic. Year over year. Yeah. Yeah. So they're getting rid of the lock. Are they replacing it with something? They're replacing it with what they call the tune icon, where you can tune. get a bunch of information. Like a, like Gives a you ex- the site's HTTPS certificate and all that stuff that you got from the, the lock. Only now it gives you even more. Okay. Uh, they're just redesigning the look of, Cro- of Chrome. You'll see. Yeah. Facebook is furious at the FTC after the agency proposes a ban on monetizing youth data. Yeah. Okay. So if I understand this correctly, a couple of years ago, they said, hey, you can't sell youth data. And they yes. said, okay. Correct. And Facebook then, agreed to that. Yep. Face- we're talking about Facebook Messenger kids. And then now Facebook's like, so they're angry that they're selling kids data. Right. Even though they said they weren't going Facebook to. Facebook has repeatedly violated its privacy promises. Okay. Says the director of FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protections. They're angry at themselves for a Agreeing to it, or they're angry that they're the angry that the FTC is now it? going to enforce it. They haven't yet, but they're they're considering enforcing. I it. mean, first of all, the FTC's enforcement arm hasn't doesn't seem to be great. Active, <laughs> doesn't seem to have a pulse. <laughs> Those guys are hanging out with the Wells Fargo fraud department <laughs> <Yeah>. over there. <laughs> we encourage. It's an encouraging department. Obviously, obviously, they're waking up to do something because Facebook is quite irate yeah. about this. They're in the business of selling data, so I can understand why they would be irate about it. But I feel like, but youth data, they were not supposed to sell. Yeah, didn't. But haven't they said like they've tried to fix this, or they can, or they can't, or no, oh, just, Mark Zuckerberg is the king of going in front of Congress or the, some subcommittee and saying he's going to do something and proceeding to not do it. Yeah. And he's very, he's very believable saying, oh, that's an issue we will definitely correct and then not correct. It. Really? Yeah. I think they'll be more accountable than that. TSMC outlines two nanometer plans. That is uh, for a chip, I presume, right? Yes. We're currently, tiny we're currently around seven, seven, yeah, seven yeah, nanometers, yeah. which is mind blowing that that's yeah. even possible. That's cr- just, that's amazing. Like at two nanometers. Now it's, it's one thing to say we're going to put out two nanometer chips. This is another thing to say. We're going to put out two nanometer chips in the next two or three years. Yeah. They're putting a date to it. Moore's law. If you don't follow Moore's law, the ghost of Gordon Moore shows up and you don't want him in your conference room. Well, up until a few months ago, the actual Gordon Moore would show well, up. Well, yeah, but now he's outsourced that. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to me. I mean, I, it, I'm so sort of, ah, what's the right word? Like almost numb to it. Just like, yeah, of course they're going to figure this out. Well, physically, this is like, but after this, this is impossible. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know how they figured we this out. We can't use nanometers anymore. Angstrom, you've got to have a different form of measurement. You go to, you go to centimeters. I think that's next centimeters. centimeters we're going we're going kilometer. bigger we're What's going bigger nanometers picometer right i mean eventually you're like smaller than an atom right it's got to have at least one row of atoms you can't go less than I'm that sure they'll figure out a way incredible just atoms it's all quirks i keep thinking it's not going to keep going no, i mean it, when you're, you're it, when you're at seven nanometers i'm like it's not possible to go smaller than that that's not possible because the link the wavelength of light that they are using yeah is 13 nanometers yeah literally it is smaller than the wavelength of light they are using to etch the chip yeah you go smaller than that now you're in x-ray land that that sounds like the best ride at disneyland what's that (laughs) x-ray land (laughs) (laughs) as you look around at everybody else in cars you're just seeing their skeletons hey look at that guy he's had his hip replaced (laughs) walking around Speaking of chips, Microsoft and AMD are reportedly teaming up to combat NVIDIA's AI dominance. You know, all the AI is running on an NVIDIA sure. chip. We've talked about this. Microsoft obviously spent a ton of money on AI. Yeah. Right? They're going to be de- deploying Copilot and for everything. And a ton of money those on those yeah. A100 chips, which, yeah. by the way, is an enormous amount of processing power Why not for, own a for third the money. Of the business or whatever. Yeah. And then uh, you get the chips cheaper. This makes sense. I mean, I'm sure they're going to just keep pouring chips into Azure all day long to power this stuff. Mm. I can't wait for, uh, co- you know, they're releasing Copilot, they like Copilot and GitHub yeah, yeah, sure. for coding. And and then they demoed Copilot for Office, yeah. which I thought was super cool. I'm really excited about the release coming. I think this is embargoed. The release um, later this year of Copilot for Minesweeper. <laughs> AI assistance for Minesweeper. It's like, but it's like the most passive aggressive AI. Don't fucking click there, you idiot. There's two. You can see. Just click up. Fuck. Yeah. Then it goes on a smoke break. <laughs> AI versus Hollywood. Writers battle plagiarism machines in union talks. Uh, my bet. You know, on, the on writers the, are on strike. They are on strike. I see them uh, walking around town. Yeah. And I'm generally pro writer. Oh, I'm totally pro writer. I'm 100 percent pro writer. I think you need to embrace the tools and not just shun them. Uh, I'm not sure how the tools help you here, just because of of what they do. I'm not sure you're getting going to get oh, anything I'm sure interesting out of this plenty of help either it could be as low level as formatting or software already does that. filling in some crappy dialogue somewhere ah uh, see i think Give it gets an assessment on, could, on a very low end show maybe but on a high end show that's a little harder what if you what if you had okay here's an idea yeah what if you had a room you got like i don't know five folks that are writing scripts for the same episode okay and then you use ai to mash them together and try to give you the best bits of each one that could be a thing maybe you uh, get a better script out of it wouldn't really work because you kind of have to have one idea that's cohesive from beginning to end i mean we're miles away from AI being able to contribute in a writer's room. Then they shouldn't be worried about it. Oh, I agree. I agree. But they've been scared by people who I know AI. I understand they're scared. I understand they're scared. That's the whole world. They've 
all been this... scared about problems that are going to happen. And, and everybody is saying, oh, my God, it's going to happen so fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to happen so fast so, in 20, 25 years. I'll, I'll find a link and put it on uh, on this show's episode notes. Somebody online had posted a picture on uh, Twitter that was like a room full of like accountants. Yeah. And they said all of these guys were replaced with a single Excel sheet and no one's running around talking about how Microsoft killed the entire world from. A... Well, sure. I mean, we the tools do make us more efficient. I'm yes. just saying in this case that the tool really isn't going to be able to do what they're thinking it can do. Well, it won't do what they're what they're postulating it's going to do. Yes. But writers, your jobs, the, your jobs are safe. But my understanding is they're saying we don't want any AI, AI ever. And they're worried about not being compensated well, having to be on the tail end of AI, which ultimately, I get. Yes. Ultimately, but, they're, they're afraid of AI slipping its way in the door. And as soon as it slips in the way it's in the door, eventually it gets rid of all the writers. It's just not something not they happen. have to worry about. Not going to happen. Now, obviously, last week we said to models, yeah, you should fear AI. Your jobs, oh, yeah, are, your jobs are done for. 100% fucked. But to writers, no, your jobs are fine. Your, job, fine. your jobs are secure. You're not going anywhere. Unless they write for models. <laughs> okay, enough with the headlines. Up next, CJ is going to talk about an oldie but a goodie. Not just flying, but flying fast. Got to work in some aviation somewhere. I don't know if you know this or not about me, but I like to fly. Well, sure. But I like to fly fast and efficiently. Okay. Which is why I love Southwest. Oh, okay. Because it's efficient. Right. It yeah. really, truly is why. Like they board and turn planes faster. Sure. You don't have to fuck around somebody trying to find 8C because they don't know what seat that is. And they're okay. wandering all anybody over. gets any seat on You get Southwest. any seat you want. Sure. You just get in and any seat. This is partially why I don't fly Southwest. But see, I love that. Because especially if you get on early, you can you can stake out a good seat. You can get whatever you want. You can hold the right. one next to you. It's, it's lovely. But for a short haul, point to point air travel. I think Southwest is the best. I know you don't. That's okay. I'm not going to convert you. It's you know, it's fine. It's 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 and and it serves its purpose. If I want to if I want to go to Las it's Vegas, efficient. I almost have no choice but to go Southwest. Well, I mean, you got a choice, but you really don't have a choice. I mean, there yeah. are other airlines that fly there, but you don't want to take those. You want to take Southwest. You want to get there fast, right? right. It's very. It, it, I don't want it to be. I an used experience. to fly around the country back before 9/11. Yeah. Uh, with a business partner of mine, and we would yeah. literally treat airplanes like they were just buses. Sure. Where we wouldn't have to pre-book anything. We could yeah. literally just fly point to point and decide we're going to go someplace else and hop the next plane. Sure. It was wonderful. That's and, what Southwest and, is. And 9-11 brought that to a screeching yeah. halt. Well, here we are now. But how do you think we can make air travel even more efficient or just faster? What do you think we could do? Have assigned seats. <laughs> All right. That's the segment, everybody. <laughs> Never thought about that. Fuck assigned seats. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go patent that really quick before sure. anybody else jumps on it. Get to the USPTO. I like the fact that I can go and get my kid a pizza in the in the airport. Yeah. And when I come back, all the seats are not taken. My seat's still there because I have an assigned your seat. seat. Wait. And the, what do you mean? At the air, Wait. On the airplane? There's no pizza on the airplane. No, no, no. I'm in the airport. I haven't gotten yes. on the plane yet. Yes. But they decide they're going to start boarding the plane. Okay. My seat in 2C is still going to be available to this me is when I come back. This is true. Or you just get on the plane and they start boarding. And you get the fuck out of... You're the guy... You're you're why those planes are slow. Because you're out there getting a fucking pizza. They're trying to close the door. They're but like, they're not trying to close the door. I'm there, I'm there way before the door is closed. I don't, I don't, I get, and well, I, and I get a good seat. Okay. So here's what's, what's nuts to me. Yeah. We've had some good ideas outside of, of airplanes, like the Hyperloop. I'm a big fan of the Hyperloop. You are. I'm not sure it's feasible. It's not. But I love the idea. Long um, stretch of vacuum. Yeah. Not going to happen. What could go wrong? How hard could it be? Dyson's <laughs> okay. figured it out. Yeah, okay. Just a bunch of Dyson's. <laughs> that was my plan. Every quarter great, mile, you just put a big Dyson. Here's the advertising slogan for Dyson is it never loses suction. Yeah, because yeah, it never had any. <laughs> <laughs> I love my Dyson. How dare you? I love both my Dysons. It just doesn't suck very hard well, it compared sucks to great. any other Wait vacuum. Oh, we're talking about vacuums. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> So confused. You, you have so a confused. girlfriend named Dyson? Her name is Dyson. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's um, she's really only known for one thing. <laughs> Her and suction. It's not, and it's not sucking very well, as it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Hoover house. Um, but here's the thing. We aren't flying any faster than than we have in the past, say, 50 years, which to me is crazy. Why is that? Is that because of fuel efficiency? What's What is slowing us down? Well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So... Commercial passenger aircraft has gotten, as we've covered in the show before, safer and more economical yes. than it was 50 years ago. Oh, extraordinarily more economical. But it travels at the same speed, okay. arguably slower because we are to the Concorde. Yeah. And if we had, had propagated the rate of growth in commercial transatlantic aircraft speeds from 1939, basically when, when planes started and you started flying, yeah. to the mid-70s, if we carried that forward, we'd have planes doing Mach 4 now. Okay. Mach 
Four. Yeah. That's 3,000 miles an hour. That's four times the speed of sound. That is four times. Thank you. That's the sure. four in Mach. Wow. He did that math in his head, folks. You hear that? I said Mach 4, and then he said four times the speed of sound. In case someone's listening who doesn't know what Mach 4 means. No, that's 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 great. I'm glad you're, I'm really, I put into miles per hour, you just put into speed of sound at sea level. It's because I watched Speed Racer as a kid. Did you watch the cartoon Speed Racer? I did. I did a little. That's how you learn what that, Mach means. That is, okay. Yeah. Well, bad news. We're still doing sub Mach. We're still at subsonic speeds, yes, not traveling yes. across the, the speed of, of sound. Here is why, or at least how, why I think, and, and I'm piggybacking off um, Eli Dorado. So 50 years ago, in March of 73, Alex P. Butterfield, he was the administrator of the FAA, he issued a rule that That's still totally remains. That's totally a fake name, isn't it? Alex P. Butterfield? Alex P. APB? Butterfield. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put out an APB, and it's like, ha, ha, exactly. ha, 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 ha. Um, He issued a rule that, that still remains, right? And as as um, Eli put it, he said, one of the most destructive acts of in- industrial vandalism in history. That's how it, that's what, what Eli referred to this this um, this rule. Okay. And so you know he's not pulling any punches. Sure. Here's what, what um, Alex P. Butterfield wrote. No person may operate a civil aircraft at a true flight Mach number greater than one, except in compliance with conditions and limitations in an authorization to exceed Mach 1 issued to the operator under Appendix B of this part, which is basically a long way of saying, unless we specifically grant you the right R- variance, yes, you cannot go past Mach 1. Right? Sure. You can't break the sound barrier. This text had been modified again in, in the late 80s and then again in, in uh, 2021. Were there tons of people hoping to break Mach 1? I mean, that well, doesn't seem like that's so we on, were. on a commercial level. It doesn't seem that interesting. But in the 70s, we were in a race for supersonic speeds, right? Yeah. You had you had the Europeans building uh, the Concorde. Yeah. And Boeing ultimately won a contract here to try to build a, a hypersonic speed plane, right? A, a supersonic plane. The the What's crazy about this rule, and I never thought about it this way until Eli pointed this out, the rule imposed a speed limit on U.S. airspace, not a noise standard. Okay. So the noise standard would make sense. The belief yeah. on, on why we put this limit in effect the boom. was because of the boom, right? right? And, and instead they put in a speed limit. So if you look now- Well, those things are related. Well, yes and no. Okay. So I want to talk about this a little bit more. Okay. So the global airline industry brings in around $800 billion in revenue per year. So almost as much as video games. Almost as much as gaming. Yeah, how sad is that? You spent the last 100 years trying to fly planes. and like, or you could be Fortnite. Sure. Those are your choices. Which takes more engineers? I don't even know if that's true. I don't know what, what games 30 guys in. drinking Mountain Dew. We have like teams of engineers up in Washington building planes. Yeah, those, those, that's, it's a comparison. Of that $800 billion, only a tiny fraction of those funds go into supersonics, Right. And uh, they could go towards these what are called, quote, low boom designs that yeah. make supersonics go mainstream. And the belief is that because we can't fly them in the U.S., no one's willing to invest a lot of money in this. Sure. So NASA, they get a variance. NASA will soon be testing an experimental low boom aircraft called the X-59. Tell me what low boom is versus full full volume yeah, okay. boom. So, is there a decibel difference? How do we measure the difference? Yeah. So it, it, it's not just a decibel difference. It's also a the edges of the boom, if you will. So typically, most, most uh, aircraft... You're going to get two sonic booms that come off. Explain why we get the booms. The leading edges of the um, uh, of the bird itself. But yeah, explain so, what's happening that's causing that. So you're basically moving air at the speed of sound yes. as you cross over that. And then you get these two separate, very, very close related sonic booms. They merge together as they get closer to to you, the listener, right? Standing right. on earth. And then you end up with what they call, I think they call it like an, like an N-shaped boom. So you have this very hard edge on the boom. So it's a very abrupt sort of boom. Right. Eli goes into great detail in this in his in his article. He actually went to a NASA facility where they strap you in this little room, it's like the size of a closet, and it's got a bunch of subwoofers in it, and they play a sonic boom for for you. Sure, so you can actually experience a at sonic the volume boom. you would yep, feel that if you, would you feel. were how close if you and were where. He, his takeaway from that was even like the loud boom, quote unquote, the F fourteen loud boom. It's like it really wasn't that loud. Like it wasn't that. Oh, disturbing. I remember it vividly. Well, at, when they would land the shuttle, a space shuttle, sure. at, at Edwards, you'd hear the boom. It would shake your windows. Yeah. But it wasn't like it wasn't overly abrupt. I didn't think a couple times. In I most it. cases, in the space shuttle, in the case of the space shuttle, we knew it was coming. Sure, but but also it was not gentle. This X fifty nine is designed to lower that. Right, it's then to have a very low cruise sonic boom in standard atmosphere. So they're shooting for like seventy five pldb or less across what they call the boom. What's carpet. a pldb? Perceived loudness measured in PLDB. Okay. Here's the difference. Even strong N waves, such as those generated by the Concorde or military aircraft can be far less objectionable 
if the rise time of the overpressure is sufficiently long, right? So basically like a softer oh, edge. Okay, okay. So you're spreading it out over time. Yes. I get you. I get so you. a new metric has emerged known as the perceived loudness, which is measured in PLDB. Yeah. Okay. And this takes into account the frequency content, the rise time. And a well-known example of this is the snapping of one's fingers in which the perceived sound is nothing more than an annoyance. Yes. NASA's work on this, this X-59 is designed to have this very low PLDB, right? Something that's supposed to be... Um, right. Uh, they uh, spread it out over time. It's probably the same amount of energy. It's just, uh, it's just being dispersed over more time. So um, once this aircraft checks out, NASA is going to use it to start booming American cities. They want to test this over American cities to get response from the to people. To see how pissed off people get? How, exactly. Sure. No, that's real. To see how pissed no, off of people course, get. Of course. And they want to gather data on these the human response on this. After a couple of years of collection, data will be analyzed and turned over to the FAA and the foreign regulators to sort of figure out what sonic booms look like. And if we can, with these low boom aircraft, make something that's more acceptable. Yeah, yeah. So digging in a little deeper on this, we already know that this is acceptable because uh, as NASA titled one report in uh, 2014, there have been six decades of research on sonic boom, which means as of now, there have been seven decades of research yeah, right, on right, sonic right. boom. So we already looked at this. And in uh, 1964, over a period of six months, the FAA dropped 1,200 sonic booms over Oklahoma City. Oh, my word. In six months. In six months. In a study known as, and this is not a joke, Operation Bongo 2. Yeah. Of right? There'll be like a constant bongo <laughs> drum of sonic booms. Operation Bongo. They didn't want to pull any punches on that. How many sonic booms is that a day? Well, it was over a period of six months. So you figure that's about 180 days. 1,200 booms. That's around eight a day, give or take. I would be. That's a lot of booms. Yeah. That's like. That's, I would not be happy. These were the full-size <laughs> unabated end waves. The big sonic booms, not the gradual ones we're talking about here with this. Did this they just hate boom. the people in Oklahoma City? Well, yeah. Have you ever been to Oklahoma? Yeah, we sure. It's lovely. They're, they're really nice. Don't don't write me a letter. Well, the wind um, blows really down the plains, I believe. But 1964, it was a different time, right? The U.S. government was super bullish on supersonics, right? And they were soliciting designs for an American supersonic airliner to rival the Concorde, right? Our European uh, friends. Sure. Uh, and Boeing eventually won this contract on January 1st of 1967. Okay. So Boeing started building one of these. But at the, at the conclusion of the 64 research, this, this FAA project, the contractor stated, quote, the overwhelming majority felt they could learn to live with the numbers and kinds of booms experienced during the six-month study, which Ugh. is kind of fascinating. That's crazy. 73% of the respondents said they could live indefinitely with the cumulative level of sonic booms experienced in the study. Only 3%- Because they'd all been made deaf by month two. What? <laughs> yeah. But about 3% of the population was vehemently opposed. Yeah, the ones who could still hear. <laughs> the folks that still had their hearing were opposed to the point of filing complaints. 3%. Yeah. Right? Now, what I'm getting from this this segment here is that you've had negative experiences with sonic booms. <laughs> Do you think? I'm, I feel like maybe you were locked in the, the sonic <laughs> boom closet a little, little too long as a child. Okay, but check this out. In 2018, NASA dropped 52 booms on Galveston, Texas over the course of nine days of testing. And they, they did not. What do, do they have against these cities? Well, have you been to Texas? Yes. Oh, well, Galveston's not bad. What's your problem? Barbecue. Yeah. A lot of probably barbecue. Probably pretty a lot, good. A lot of barbecue. Probably pretty good. Now that I think about it. But they didn't do this with like, like a low boom aircraft like the X-59. They used an ordinary fighter jet that did this sort of nifty maneuver. It would go up to uh, offshore to 50,000 feet. And then they'd, they'd roll the aircraft over into an inverted position and pull up into a vertical dive. Sure. And then recover on 30,000 feet. So they basically try to make this giant supersonic uh, They're boom aiming it aimed right at, at the Calvin. ground. Yeah, that's exactly. horrible. And then they generate the sonic boom. NASA put microphones everywhere to record this. Eli, uh, the, the guy who I got most of this from, yeah. was in Galveston for one of these days of tests. Yeah. And he said the measurements range from anywhere from 65 to 89 PLDB. Sure. And he said one of the booms, which he knew was coming, um, uh, due to the sort of the comms from NASA and watching on, on flight aware was completely inaudible. You couldn't even hear it. And he said for one of the louder booms, he watched a fisherman on the pier who was briefly startled, but went back to fishing in under one second. Sure. The survey, uh, that it's NASA still put loud out, just because people can endure a loud sound. Doesn't yeah, mean but I mean, there's a, a car drives on the street and backfires. You don't write your congressman. We well, I do if I'm recording when it backfires. <laughs> well, this session, we should be writing a lot more letters about leaf blowers. Yeah. Uh, so when NASA surveyed the Galveston residents based on their their event exposure, 17 out of the 2,000 dealer respondents reported being highly annoyed, okay. which is less than 1%. It's the smart 1%, though. But you're always going to annoy some number of people. You can't do better than 1%, I don't think. It seems to me that if we uh, um, were to embrace this sort of, quote, boom-shaping technology and not listen to that very, very tiny vocal minority, mm -hmm. we could actually me. get... Not listen to you specifically, not listen to you. These cultural forces that led to and sustained the ban against uh, supersonic travel uh, could be lifted, 
right? And get back to that. Sure. Uh, the challenge is how do you do this? What Eli suggested is that we uh, actually have Congress, those guys, repeal the supersonic ban as soon as possible, like this year, and repeal it in such a way where you say, okay, you're allowed to go supersonic, but you have to be below like a 90 PLDB threshold for daytime operations or 80 DB for nighttime operations. Mm -hmm. No plane can do that right now, but at least you encourage manufacturers to want to invest in supersonic travel to try to get under that threshold. Right. And that seems like a, a really easy change that we could put in place and get planes that go a little faster than 500 miles an hour. I would like to hear these. I mean, based on his writing, it seems like these aren't nearly as loud as I have have thought them to be. Uh -huh. And this would be great. Like if you could actually oh, have. I remember them rattling windows. Yeah. They were loud. His point is that you can design them now to be less impactful on the sonic boom, right? You have these these low boom waves that are created. Right. So right. I think it would, be, it would be entirely different. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to actually somehow try to experience it and see what it sounds like. But it seems like a path forward. We should be doing Mach 4. There's no reason I need to spend. By the way, once you get over Mach, I get the same boom, whether it's four or yeah. 12. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Because, well, yeah. I mean, it does get, the engineering gets pretty hard though. But I'd like to be able to go faster. This is why I was so intrigued by the Hyperloop. I thought the Hyperloop had great potential. It's hard to hold a vacuum How are you going to hold the whole, yeah, exactly. How are you going to hold the vacuum? It's not going to work. But, but if you can hold the vacuum. That's a huge if. I That's know. like an impossibility. I know. Really good seals. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, supersonic travel. I would love, I had, I had the opportunity many years ago to fly on the Concorde yeah. and I didn't because I was like, oh, it, like it'll always be there. Yeah, you do in the future. Never, and never got to gone. fly on You're it. the guy because you didn't buy a ticket. No, well. Because you didn't want to spend $10,000 no, to no, get to London. The thing. They had a ticket for me. It was a client. I was oh. in New York. They had an extra ticket. They're like, hey, we're going. They can't make you want to go on the Concorde. And I was yeah. like, no, I'll do that next time. Yeah. There was no next time. I'm really just summarizing uh, the absolute uh, the absolutely excellent article from uh, from Eli. And if you're interested, you should uh, head over to elidorado.com and read the entire article because it's way more interesting than hearing me talk about it. Let's put that link somewhere. You'll put it in these notes. I always do. There you go. And you can save the calories of typing those 14 characters. Thank you. Anyway, up next, Jeff's going to talk about buying your data in your local grocery store, I, I think. Sort of. Do you think my data is in the organic section? Uh, your data is everywhere. So the NBA finals are going on and my son and I race to a game. We're actually going with uh, to some friends and because of the friends, not us, we're a little delayed okay. and I'm kind of a punctuality freak. So yeah, it I've kind of you. bothers me that we're not on time. Sure. The only thing I need to get when I get into the Mamba Center yep. uh, to watch the game is I, I, gotta, juice. I want a bottle of water Okay. because it's a long time to say, and I don't want to leave the game okay. midway through and go stand in line for 30 minutes to sure. get a bottle of water. Okay. And there's zillions of lines everywhere at every snack bar. They're going to take me... At least 20 minutes to yeah, get a bottle of water. Kind of time. I'm going to miss the game. You're already late. There are two shopping centers in the Mamba Center okay. with the credit card you know, reader thing. I yep. bang my watch on the credit card reader. The gate flies open. Okay. I can go in. I can grab a bottle of water and walk straight out. I don't yep. have to go to a cashier. There's yep. never a line. I grab my water and my son and I go and we sit down in our seats and we get to see tip off. Yep. That's because of the amazing work of facial recognition and the downward cameras sure. that are tracking everything I buy. And at no point is there a human being required. Nope. But you know, there's tons of data that's being collected. Yep. They know who I am. They've scanned my face. Which is hard with that beard. They got to scan that whole beard. <laughs> it takes extra scanning. Whole, I mean, it takes the, extra scanning because of the beard. The hair scanning, yeah. Sure. They got it down to the follicle. <laughs> I cause seg faults because of this it, beard. Totally. Yeah, sure. Fucking Santa's grabbing water again. What do we do? <laughs> Just give it to him. So you know that those stores like Amazon Go, yeah. they're special cases and you just go, yeah, this is going to absorb a ton of data. Sure. Because that's what that yeah. store is. Yeah. Okay. Next story. Kroger and Albertsons are hoping to merge, okay. right? It is a $24.6 billion merger. Okay. According to the Economic Policy Institute, it will also cost workers of those chains of stores more than $300 million annually, lower wages. It's uh, going to affect 750,000 workers. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Just by merging these, the efficiencies wow. that they will get. Sure. Kroger stores include Kroger, Ralph's, Food for Less, Dillon's, Smith's, King Supers, Fry's, QFC, City Market, and others. Nearly two dozen chains. Wow. How many stores? 2,750 stores. That is a lot of stores. 60 million shoppers. Wow. This much? is before the merger. That's insane. And Annual sales of $137 billion in, in 2021, which is the latest figures we have. That is a lot of Oreos. And they want to merge... <laughs> Yes, it is a lot of Oreos. They want to merge with Albertsons, which is 2,276 stores. When you say merge. It's a cheaper way of combining your companies. I think what will happen is 
Kroger and Albertsons will be merged and the new company will be called Kroger's. Kroger's, yes. And it will yeah. use the Kroger management yep. and the Kroger data team, which I'm going to come to in a second here. Albertsons isn't a great name. It just isn't. Albertsons? I, I don't know. It sounds like a condition. I've got Albertsons. Yeah. Why isn't your buddy coming to the game? Oh, <laughs> he's, he's got, got Albertsons. Albertsons. Yeah. Really? Is it bad? Yeah. Oh, well, how's, what is he going to do? He's going to put some Kroger on it. Kroger's <laughs> are much better. I grew up around Kroger's, though. They were, they were, that was the chain of choice. It's got to be the name of the people who started it, right? I Because what's a Kroger? Something else. That's a worse condition now that I think about it. <laughs> he's got Kroger. Your Albertsons turns into a Kroger. Well, you can clean up Kroger with a little ointment. Yeah. Well, then you then you super all over the place. <laughs> Call it a king super. In 2003, Kroger partnered with Dunhumby, a data science subsidiary of UK's supermarket chain, Tasco. Now, if you've been to Britain, you've yep. seen those things everywhere. Dunhumby gathered shoppers' data through loyalty programs. We have loyalty programs in the US now in basically every supermarket you go into. After a successful 12-year partnership, Kroger purchased a majority stake in Dunhumby's US operations oh, and wow. rolled it into its own data data science firm, which is called 84.51. It's named after the longitude of Kroger's Cincinnati headquarters. Wow. They phoned in on that one. Yeah. What do you want to call this thing? We had all sorts of choices. How about 84.51? Call it, call it the longitude. I don't don't actually think up a name. Wow. It, just imagine it as Kroger's data. Yep. The data they collect is mind-blowing, starting with facial recognition. Yeah. Everywhere you go in the market, you are being tracked. How long yeah. you paused looking at things, whether it's condoms, alcohol, kosher foods, or other ethnic foods, baby diapers, etc. Okay, they so are to learning clear, about you. I look at them in the other order. I start with the food and then I get to the booze and then I get to the condoms and then ultimately get to the diapers. <laughs> okay, so you've got the right set of things. It's just, I do it in the other order. I mentioned them in this order because new parents are the retailer's holy grail. Totally. If they can find you in your second trimester, they own you for a very, very long time. Yeah, and having been through two second trimesters, I understand that. Yeah. Well, not because me. Because we're, but... cre we're creatures of habit. Totally. I don't know if you remember the uh, uh, product Febreze. I do. When it was first launched, they put out all of these commercials. And basically, Febreze is something you spray on something and it takes the odor out. It sure. doesn't matter if it's a coat or if it's a car. It doesn't work on me. I soak in it every day. Still smell like this. <laughs> the commercials were people cleaning their houses or whatever, and they would spritz the Febreze and magically the smell would go away and sure. the person looked very happy, right? Yeah. And they sold nothing. It sold absolutely nothing. Yeah. Because then when they went in and did a little bit of, of observing of people, they yeah. went they went to a woman's house and her house was absolutely impeccably kept. She had 19 cats. So That's like, a lot of cats. So the house reeked of cat, yeah. right? Probably as cat you, piss, if I had to guess. As you as you would imagine. Yeah. The woman didn't smell it. She couldn't. Of she'd been around it so long yeah, yeah. that she didn't smell they it. They were her so roses. She, so she was never going to buy Febreze. Yeah. She didn't know she had no. a stinky house. Yeah. So what they had to do, because humans are creatures of habit, yeah. is ingrain this through their advertising with people. This is part of the reward yeah. of having cleaned something up. Sure. Not only do you get to look or, look over what you've done and say, oh, I've, I've completed a, a yeah. job, a job well yeah. done, but then you spritz a little Febreze to celebrate. They got that ingrained in people's that, mind. Did that work? Yes. How did you get people to believe that? People watch it on the ad. They see people clean up. They're happy and they spritz Febreze. You know, my, my problem is when I clean, I just don't have a celebra celebration afterwards. You do. You just don't know. Now I have Febreze. When you straighten up, gap. when you straighten up a bunch of books or something, sure. you don't realize it. You take one last look at that and go, very nice. Well, then I reach for my Febreze from my Febreze holster. <laughs> well, now you will. I pull that out. Just now you will. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that because we're, we're such creatures of habit. The key to controlling those habits is data. Sure. Everything you buy, if a sale price even causes you to pause to consider it, that's yeah, kept sure. in the data. Yeah. How much you spend, the type of credit card you use, coupons you use, mail-in rebates. Yeah. In the Kroger system, there are 2,000 plus variables on wow. each of their customers. That's a lot of variables. There are 18 years of Kroger Plus card data. Kroger Plus card is their affinity card. Okay. So 18 years of data. Yeah. There are 2 billion annual transactions across 60 million households with a persistent household identifier. Yeah, that is a lot of data. With a little additional information that they buy from data brokers, the grocery stores then sell to product manufacturers like General Mills, Unilever, Coca-Cola, Kraft Heinz, and 1,400 other companies. Grocery stores' thin margins of food are then matched with fat margins of data. Yeah, of course. It's all pure profit, right? Like this is it's just a pure profit. It's a CapEx system. It's a byproduct you of can EFT. Lose, you can lose money on the sure, food. Sure. You're going to make money on totally. the data. Yeah. All this data allows manufacturers to not just know the volume of sales, but also the context of the purchase, which is everything. Kroger claims its data is privacy compliant. Oh boy. And then they proceed to not define whatever that means. I love the word compliant. Did anyone tell me put the word compliant in there? Yeah. It's just this, what um, we are calling privacy compliant. My chat application is end-to-end -end compliant. Yes. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> mm, gotta go. Briefing's over. <laughs> the end. The famous story is Target. 
sending high school girl coupons for baby clothes and cribs. And the father burst into the store, just livid. Are you trying to yep. encourage my daughter to get pregnant? And the mailer that the man had had the daughter's address on it, sure yep. enough. And it contained advertisements for maternity clothing, nursery furniture, and pictures of smiling infants. The manager apologized profusely and then called back a few days later to apologize again. And on the phone, though, the father, somewhat abashed, said, I had a talk with my daughter, and it turns out there's been some activities in my house that I haven't been completely aware of. She's due in August. I owe you an apology. And by the way, can I get 20% off on those maternity clothes? <laughs> yeah. I mean, because the data knows better than Based upon did. the vitamins she was looking sure. at, I mean, it's a typical thing that you might not associate with pregnancy, women start buying unscented lotion. That seems benign. Sure. It's a tell because their sense of smell suddenly becomes much more acute Heightened. sometimes yeah. during pregnancy. Huh, fantastic. Your grocery know store probably knows more about you and your family than you do. Yeah. Race, gender, generation, sensitive information about our lives, relationships, and finances. Can I ask them where my kids are? Because I haven't seen them in a while. I'm sure Kroger knows. <laughs> Dear Whole Foods. I'll write them a letter. <laughs> it gets even more interesting when multiple sources of data are combined. Your Roku TV, for example, as you know, is watching you. Yeah. One case study on the Kroger website describes how a snack brand used the company's data to measure the effect of ads it placed on Roku's connected TVs. The analysis showed that households that saw the snack ads spent five times more on the brand than the average Kroger shopper. Wow. Five X. I mean, this is like the old uh, Yakov Smirnov joke. In Soviet Russia, Roku TV watch you. Amy Klobuchar, chair of the subcommittee on competition policy, antitrust, and consumer rights, puts it this way. Most people have no idea that some stores are collecting data on what groceries they buy to sell to the highest bidder or using facial recognition technology to track them as they shop. The situation is especially concerning given how few options consumers have for grocery stores in many communities. Americans deserve protections against excessive surveillance and companies misusing their personal data. It's time to pass federal privacy legislation to protect consumers. Now this sounds like a very steep hill to climb. At this point, yes. Yeah. The quantity of data that is saved about every single customer is vast. I'm very torn about this though. Do you because... care about all the data that's being saved about? You? I mean, I, I do. Again, there is convenience trade off. Oh, I, absolutely. And of course, I want the convenience and I want all the perks with none of the downside. What's really happening to me with that data being out there? I don't I don't know. Like, am I getting more spam mail at home? Probably. Is that oh, an easy well, problem for me to sort? You're yeah. basically being completely tracked with everything you but do. I carry a cell phone. So, of course, I'm being completely yeah. tracked everywhere. Right. Turn I mean, off your cell there's phone. There's more data that's being collected on your cell phone in addition so to again, that. So, again, kind of like back to the FTC talking about AI. I'm like, we got, we got more baseline privacy problems to solve before we go after. Kroger's it seems like at this point, the privacy problems are unsolvable. They're so big. If you don't want your data out there, that's a solvable problem. Is it? Yeah. You wear a mask, pay with cash. Here's how much data we're talking about with Kroger. They have 35 plus petabytes. Wow. Of first party consumer data. That's a lot of data. A petabyte, just so people understand, is a million gigabytes. Kroger's trove of customer data is 67% larger than the U.S. Library of Congress's digital collection, yeah. which clocked in at 21 petabytes. Yeah, that's a lot of bytes. So what options do people have who don't want this data about them to be collected? Okay, pay cash. Pay cash is a, is a great one. If you always paid cash, yep, helps it would, a lot. that would help a lot. Helps a lot. By the way, we probably got your license plate when you totally. drove into the parking lot. So we have a clue who you might be. You, so you're probably somebody who rides in this car a lot. Send your help to go get the food. Yes. Don't well, do it that's yourself. The big one. And then have your help send their help. <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, I think if you want to stay anonymous, it's tough. You got to start with payment. I think that's the first place, right? Yeah. With cash or burner cards right. or whatever. Turn your phone off for Christ's sake. Because your phone knows where you are and all the apps in it goes with you, you everywhere you go. I got a better solution for you. Okay. Harvest your own food. Uh, no, no. There are grocery chains. I'm going to say one, Trader Joe's, yeah. who do not offer loyalty programs. Hmm. They do not sell shopper data. Trader Joe's website notes, we don't have sales. We don't offer coupons. There are no loyalty programs or membership cards to swipe at our store. Trader Joe's believes every customer should have access to the best prices on the best products every day. As a company spokesman put it, we don't collect any data on our customers. That's pretty cool. Period. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. But again, what what are you worried about? Like, what's the worst thing that's coming out of this data? I don't know. It feels like mainly not positive to me. Maybe I'm just tired of the fight. Well, here's the problem. I don't care about me. I could care less about me. Sure. There are people who need privacy. There are people who actually need privacy. Sure. And for legitimate reasons. I mean, I'm not I'm not in any sort of uh, you know minority group that's persecuted yeah. or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, the Germans said we're just going to make a list of who the Jews are. Sure. And that sounded benign enough. Yeah. And then it wasn't. Yeah. So yeah. Just roll call. I get it. 
I yeah. get it. How do you work around that? That's Go tough. Shop at Trader Joe's, I guess. Shop at Trader Joe's. They don't keep a list. And if you don't have a Trader Joe's in your neighborhood, try to find something similar. We have to get out of here, but quickly before we do, have you seen or read anything good this last week? Oh, I did. Yeah, good. I, I never have a good answer for this. I feel like I have one finally today, okay. episode 19. But I'm going to start as a question that I'm going to pose to you. Okay. Does a USB drive get heavier as you store more files on it? No, because you're just moving electrons from one place to another. Where did you read this? How'd this come up? On, on, on the web. Okay. I came across a story. I came across somebody that had asked this question. Question, and I thought about it for a minute. And I was like, well, yeah, I would think, but it would be infinitesimal, but I had no idea which well, way it would course. go because I didn't know how the data was stored. Sure. So I guessed much like you did. That yeah. You, how about you? Have you seen or read anything good this last week? Yes. And I believe it or not, I'm not going to plug something on Apple TV Plus. What? Just to try something really different. I watched a show called Jury Duty on Amazon. It's actually on free V, but you get to that through okay. Amazon somehow. Yeah. This is a camera crew that is following a jury trial, which you okay. think they'd never be able to do sure. with a judge. And it's actually the judge's last trial before okay. he returns tires so he doesn't want to miss trial he ends up sequestering everybody the interesting thing about it is that everybody in the show is an actor okay there is only one person on the jury who doesn't know this whole thing is oh, made wow. up oh wow and it's great oh i bet that's gonna be amazing it's hilarious the guy who doesn't know is the most lovely tolerant person you could possibly wow. imagine that's amazing it's a great show and it's really fun that's awesome i'll check that out that sounds great that's the episode thank you for joining us for all this nonsense a truly terrible podcast from the awful company visit us on the web at nonsense Production. I am Jay Little. I'm Jeff Parker. If you like this program, please follow, download, subscribe, and like at Apple, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or our favorite Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Podcastindex.org. Special thanks to our floor director, Jake Parker. Thanks, Jake. We'll be here every Thursday morning for more nonsense. Join us. A lot of things I'd probably want to ban. Oh, I hope we've run out of tape. <laughs> <laughs>